Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over section 2.1a of our virtual algebra 1 text focusing on how to solve one step equations. Before we get started with um, some examples, let's go ahead and do a real quick review on inverse operations. Okay, so review on inverse operations. The operations that we're going to be focusing on uh, in this presentation are four operations, namely addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. First thing you want to note is that the inverse, the inverse of addition is what? The inverse of addition is subtraction. So if you want to undo an addition operation, you subtract um, that exact number and that will undo the addition. Okay? Uh, and then the inverse of multiplication The inverse of multiplication is division. All right, so you just want to keep um, these inverse operations in mind when you're solving um, algebraic equations. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. The instruction as for us to solve each equation. Alright, so number one, let's say we have the equation x minus 13 equals negative 11. Alright, so what does it mean to solve this equation? To solve this equation means to get the variable isolated. All right. So we have x minus 13 equals negative 11. So what is this? What is the value of this x? That's the question. Now what you want to do is you want to look at the term that's attached to the x, which is negative 13, and ask yourself what is the operation and what's the inverse of that operation? Okay? So this is minus or subtraction. What is the inverse of subtraction? The inverse of subtraction is addition. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 13 to both sides of the equation. Equation basically means that it's balanced, okay, the left and the right side. So in order to preserve the equality, anything you do to the left side of the equation, you have to do exactly the same thing to the right. So the goal is to undo minus 13. So we take the inverse operation, which is the addition of 13. We apply that operation to both sides. And on the left side, negative 13 plus 13 add up to what? Zero. Okay? So the additive inverse is, so we have x equals negative 11 plus 13. Remember the rule we went over in our previous chapter? When you're combining numbers with different signs, you subtract and keep the sign of the bigger. Okay? So you subtract these two numbers, 13 minus 11 is 2. Uh, the bigger of the two numbers is positive, I mean it's 13, so it's positive. So our answer is going to be positive 2. Alright, let's take a look at another example. Notice we did this in just one step, okay? Um, what if we have negative 13? equals k minus 17. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. We have negative 13 equals k minus 17. Now we are subtracting 17 here, minus 17, so we want to undo minus 17. 
So what's the inverse of minus 17? The inverse operation of minus 17 is plus the opposite of in, the inverse of minus or subtraction is addition, so plus 17. We apply that to both sides of the equation to preserve equality. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this. On the right side, minus 17 and plus 17 are inverses, so they take each other out. You're left with K. And then minus 13 plus 17, different signs, subtract. 13 from 17, that's 4, and you keep the sign of the bigger, which is positive. So we can rewrite this as k equals 4 using the reflexive property of equality. All right. Now let's take a look at uh, question number 3. What if we have y plus 3 equals 12. Let's go ahead and solve this equation or basically get y by itself or find out what value of y satisfies this equation. Okay, so we have y plus 3 equals 12. We want to get y isolated so we need to get rid of this um, other term right here. This term is connected to y by addition, so plus 3. Okay, if you want to undo that, we're going to use the inverse operation of plus 3. The, inver the inverse of addition is subtraction, so you subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. And then you have on the left side, these are inverses, so they take each other out. Additive inverses add up to 0, so you have y equals... 12 minus 3, subtract, keep the sign of the bigger, as positive 9. Okay, so that's the value of y. Now let's take a look at another example, question number 4. Now what if we have the equation 9 over 5 equals n over 5? Let's go ahead and solve that. So you have 9 over 5 equals n over 5. We want to get the variable n isolated. 5 is connected to n by the operation known as division. What is the inverse of division? The inverse of division is multiplication. So if you want to undo division by 5, you multiply by 5. To preserve equality, you apply that operation to both sides of the equation. Okay, just multiply by 5. On the right side, um, the 5's divide out. 5 goes here, 1, 5 goes here, 1. Nicely like that. And then on the left side, the same thing happens. 5 goes here, 1. 5 goes there, 1. This is cross reduction. If you have identical numbers multiply by each other, when you have one in the numerator and the other in the denominator, you use um, the inverse property of division. You can just divide a 2 and then you get 1. All right. So on the left side, we have 1 times 9, which is 9. And on the right side, is just n times 1. n over 1 is just n. So your final answer is n. That's the answer to question number 4. All right, let's take a look at the last example of solving one-step equations. Let's say we have negative 6x equals 36. All right, so how do we solve this equation? To solve this equation, we want to get the variable isolated, or we want to find what x value satisfies this equation or makes this equation true. To get x isolated, we have to determine the operation that connects this coefficient or constant with x. The operation is multiplication. There's a multiplication there, but you don't write it. All right. Now, how do you undo multiplication? What is the inverse of multiplication? The inverse of multiplication is division. So you divide both sides. 
by negative 6. Okay. And this negative 6 is divided out. And then you have x equals. Now, 36 divided by 6 is 6. Remember the rule for dividing numbers. We went over this in um, chapter 1. Whenever you're dividing different signs, this is plus right here and minus, the result is always minus. When you're dividing identical signs, the result is always plus. All right? So the answer to question number 5 is negative 6. So how well did you master the contents of this presentation? To demonstrate mastery, we'd like you to try out the following problems. So go ahead and try um, these out. Instructions are the same. You have to solve each equation. So what you do is copy down the problem. Try them out. Um, of course, you want to pause the video while you're working on the problems and then click on the play button to see what the answers are when you're done solving, okay? So number one, let's say have x minus 13 equals negative 11. Number two, negative 13 equals k minus 17. Number three, let's say you have negative 70 equals 10x. Number four, x over 10 equals 8. Number five, negative 24 equals 6b. Number six, k over 10 equals negative 4. Number seven, let's say you have negative 24 equals negative 4k. Number 8, negative 7 plus a equals negative 7. Number 9, 10k equals negative 80. Number 10, uh, negative 9 plus x equals negative 3. All right, so go ahead and pause uh, the video at this time, solve each equation, and then click on play to uh, see what the answers are. All right, let's assume that you had the t chance to try out the problems. Uh, we're now going to um, display the answers. So number one, the answer is x equals two. Number two, the answer is k equals four. Number three, the answer is x equals negative seven. Number four, the answer is x equals 80. Number five, the answer is b equals negative four. Number six, the answer is k equals negative 40. Number seven, the answer is k equals six. Number eight, the answer is a equals zero. Number nine, the answer is k equals negative eight. And number 10, the answer is x equals six. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies on how to solve one step algebraic equations to give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments, just please send in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to uh, support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips and support resources can be found on mathgotserve.com. Go ahead and check it out. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.